Uh, and actually, we have someone to ask about uh, about the personal experience. Uh, Pierce, uh, you, uh, I have a question for you. Are you are you belong to a group as I, as I already said, patriotic millionaires, and uh, and uh, among its um, major policy positions is that uh, dealing with higher taxes for the wealthy. Could you maybe tell us more about that? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, so, uh, I understood this panel to be talking about economic security, so I'm just going to open a little bit about those words, economic security. Um, so, I'm going to ask, what does security mean to us when we think of security? Do where does that come from? that come from locks and vaults and surveillance and police and military? <coughs> or, as I believe, does it come from community and solidarity and shared investment and justice? There are people with wealth today having conversations about how to maintain their privilege and power after the event. I leave you to imagine what that event might be. But there are conversations about collars on security guards. Those conversations are happening. So I call myself a social emotional leftist. What does that mean? That means that my background in social emotional learning and my relationship to social emotional learning I look at as the same as my relationship to socialism. They're one and the same. One is the individual praxis and analysis. One is the group praxis and analysis. There is no security without peace. There is no peace without justice. There is no justice without worker power, and there is, by definition, no worker power without socialism. Capitalism is insecure. And an imbalance and inequity in economic power will always produce an imbalance and inequity in political power. And capitalism always produces an imbalance and inequity in economic power. That is simply the way it runs. So my background in patriotic millionaires, we're a group of people with wealth. Uh, we advocate for economic justice. That looks to in a variety of ways. One of the big things we fight against is wage theft, which is the primary source of wealth, of uh, theft in this country. More dollars are stolen by employers from employees than all the numbers of dollars stolen combined in the rest of the country. And that is not front page news every day. But if someone robs a bank, we hear about it. We fight for a living wage. The idea that there are people in this country who do not have housing is a moral atrocity. It's a, and the, the idea that that is not the first thing on the agenda of every one of those people, thank you, of those Democrats running, uh, is, is absurd and is disgusting. We fight for tax justice. Uh, if you want to look at the situation of, if you want to understand what, how wealthy people feel about taxes, just look at the taxes that they rail against compared to the taxes they don't care about, right? Wealthy people, folk with wealth, they rail against the estate and income taxes, the most progressive taxation we have. Wealthy people do not care about payroll taxes or sales tax because those are regressive taxes. When you have billions of dollars, you can afford to pay 6% on whatever uh, consumer good you want. Uh, I differ a little bit from uh, the patriotic millionaires uh, as a whole um, and the rest of the economic world, obviously, but also partly because I follow something called modern, modern monetary theory. Modern monetary theory, one of the big things behind them is that in a country uh, that has currency sovereignty, as in the United States, uh, our analysis is that taxes do not fund services. Uh, what creates funding for services is government spending. That is how money itself is created, is through uh, government spending, which begs the question, uh, what are taxes for, if not to fund services? There are five reasons that we have taxes in a, in a country with uh, currency sovereignty where we don't need to tax to fund services. Uh, one is to uh, provide the demand for the currency in question. One is to slow down the economy and inflation. One is for tracking and records. Those are the little more boring ones. The two big ones of why we have taxes are to modify behavior. The big example of this are uh, is a carbon tax 
And the reason that that's not uh, coming through is because it would mod modify behavior to the point that uh, oil barons wouldn't be able to extract any more wealth. Uh, but the big reason that we have taxes is to curb inequality. And that is the reason that people with wealth fight against taxes. Because any system will always fight to preserve its own self, to perpetuate its own self. And a system that gives rise to billionaires and millionaires and wealthy and powerful will fight to maintain its own power. Uh, as for out migration, I did leave New York, but not for taxes. I still pay New York taxes. I live in a van traveling the country because that's how I choose to live. But on paper, I pay New York taxes. It wasn't because of taxes I left. So why did I leave New York? I left New York because of the winters that were exacerbated <laughs> by climate crisis. That's funny and also hard. Um, I left because of uh, a tax situation that has lent itself to gentrification that has rendered the uh, neighborhood personalities that I used to know and love completely sterile. Not completely, there's some good stuff out there. Um, I left because New York City refuses to invest in its infrastructure and public transit to the point that it takes me two hours to get to Brooklyn sometimes and I don't want to shoot myself, right? Like that's why I left. I didn't leave because I was paying too much. And, that's, and as for the question of if this does happen, right, which we've already seen that it won't, but Say we, say we pass some policies, some really drastic ones, and some millionaires and billionaires leave New York City. So? Right? The, my question to you is, if the hens pass a policy that encourage the foxes to leave the house, what is the loss? Right? Why are we catering to predators? And I ask that sincerely, and I include Bloomberg in this question. <coughs> Right? In Delaware has won the race to the bottom for being the corporate tax uh, haven that it is. Is Delaware a, a haven to live in? Right? How many millionaires and billionaires are migrating to Florida? Do they not have problems in Florida? Are we kidding? So what are we doing by trying to cater to, to predators? Why are we letting them live in our state? I have a question for you, Please. please. <laughs> Just to bring it back to here, how do you feel? You personally, how do you feel about having to uh, pay more state taxes? Uh, I feel conflicted because I want to pay into a system that provides infrastructure and I want to pay into a system that provides benefits. And I know that a lot of how the state works is that that's not where that money's going. I'm also paying into militarization of police. And I feel horrible about that. Which is why every year, as is good practice within resource generation, um, and some of the patriotic millionaires as well, um, every year I find out how much money I save on taxes through my uh, tax exempt donations that I am committed to redistributing. Uh, and whatever it is I saved on taxes, I redistribute that toward organizing because that is a better way to make sure that my money is going somewhere that, to create a world that I believe in, other than uh, dealing with the actual state itself. And as for policy, uh, it would be an extreme disservice for me to be on a panel about economic security to myself and to everyone here and to the people of Bolivia if I did not bring up that our state uh, money is going to overthrow the foreign sovereign democracies of, other, of the planet. And how do, how do we want to create economic security? We can start by not destabilizing other countries. That's a big one. We can pay reparations to black, native, and colonized peoples. And we can honor the treaties and the international law that we have already committed ourselves to, not to mention the ones that we have yet to commit ourselves to. Uh, we can completely overhaul corporate law, including the abol abolition of corporate personhood, which we don't need an amendment for. Right? We can pass a law and we can let conservatives throw, uh, and capitalists throw a frivolous lawsuit at it to take it to the Supreme Court the same way they pass abortion bans and then force us to take that to the Supreme Court. So we don't need to go through the, the, the hoops that they're making us jump through. We can have a 100% tax rate above a certain amount effectively creating a maximum wage. We can pass one of the more radical bills currently in the House and Senate right now uh, float, or recently floated through at least, the Reward Work Act, which would 
uh, it would require companies to have a third of all their board members be directly elected by employees. Talk about worker empowerment. Talk about a compromise between capitalism and socialism. We can empower unions, and we can commit to housing, healthcare, education, and jobs for all. Because that is not impossible. It is extremely feasible if we commit to it. And how will we pay for this? We will pay for it the same way that we have paid for everything else, remembering that uh, under a country in, with currency sovereignty, uh, we do not need taxes to fund services. But we will pay for it the same way we pay for everything else with the wealth that was created by labor. Whether that wealth was created by our own labor or that wealth was stolen by us by, and created by other people's labor, all wealth is created by labor. So we will pay for it by the wealth created by labor. Whatever labor we want to do, that's a decision we have to make, and we can labor to provide housing for everyone. Thank you. That's the point.